Hey everyone, welcome back to Basics. Welcome back, back to Basics, uh, where this is elementary education for all of the new uh, coin collectors out there. And today we're going to talk about one of the most common errors that can be found in pocket change or bank rolls or uh, bags of older coins like wheat cents and older nickels and buffalo nickels and that sort of thing. And that is called the lamination. And I think the best way to describe it would be to show you an example of what a lamination is. Now, lamination can occur in a few different processes in, in striking, in the mintage of coins. Uh, in this example right here of this 1942 Jefferson nickel, as you can see right here, we have a good portion, uh, kind of a lunar half circle, maybe not half, but you know, more like a 40% uh, of this coin where um, a flake of the planchet had fallen off after the strike. Uh, that's why you're still able to see uh, portions of the motto and um, Jeffers, Jefferson's profile. Uh, that, that is indicative of what a lamination is. A lamination is simply the impurities of the, um, the planchets that, that force certain areas to flake off, uh, where it's weaker. Um, traditionally I would say laminations are most commonly found in coins during the fifties, sixties, and seventies. You could easily go through a box of pennies, for example, find maybe one or two of them in a $25 box. That's how common they are. This example is more extreme because it affects not only from rim to rim, but it affects a great deal of the coin. Over 25% of the coin is affected. Now, what would really make this coin really neat is if you had the the uh, the flake or the flap still attached to the coin. That would make a make it worth a lot more money. The reverse of this coin looks normal, although although there is a little bit of damage. Looks like someone went to it, you know, with some uh, um, cutters, tin snips or something like that. Um, but this is a great example of a lamination piece. Now I also have an example of lamination on a somewhat nicer Lincoln wheat scent. As you can see right here, the coin was struck and then that little flake, that little piece fell off. Now the difference between a lamination and what some would construe as like a struck strike through where a coin is struck and there is a foreign object in the striking chamber on the coin or on the die before the coin was struck is that you could see the the design elements right there you could see the uh the wheat stock in this case of the wheat scent underneath that missing void of where there used to be a flake uh so laminations again most common error encountered out there uh, I'd say the next closest would be a rim clip a rather small one and those uh, those can be found as well uh, value wise depending on the type of lamination so this lamination right here isn't worth a whole heck of a lot you know say 50 cents to a dollar all right relatively common if we take the example I showed you with the Jefferson nickel with the bigger piece that has fallen off, this one would be more in the two to five dollar range, okay? If you had the retained piece on there, still attached to the coin, you'd be talking about a coin that's somewhere in the 10 to 50 dollar range. Again, everything is dependent on condition. And if you had a coin where you have the missing flake, but you also have the, the flake, like say right next to it, as kind of a two piece duo, set you'd be talking about a coin that could be worth anywhere from 50 to 500 dollars again depending on grade depending on the coin so that is lamination errors for you i hope you guys found this uh pretty useful and um you know it's again it's a great error to pull aside if you find them if they're really too small they're probably not worth keeping uh but hopefully uh for a lot of the new folks out there uh, this will help uh, shed some light as uh, to why a coin looks the way it does uh, in terms of lamination. So you guys have a great day and uh, stay tuned for more Back to Basics.